Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint an Ogre Moor Tribes Tyrant. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, comment and subscribe. My coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now, on to the video. So this is the finished Ogre Moor Tribes Tyrant. It's a really cool miniature to paint and this is what we're going to be working on today. A quick thanks to the patron who suggested painting this one up because it has been a lot of fun to do. The first thing we're going to work on today is going to be the skin. So we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Bugman's Glow. We're just going to paint each of the areas of skin with the Bugman's Glow. Now, depending on if you've built it already, some parts of it would be easier to paint without putting it together. You've got that little bit of scraggly beard hanging down over his chest there, which makes it a little bit awkward to do that left peck. You've also got the cloak over the back as well, which means you can't quite reach some stuff, but if you paint up really, really nicely, and then you're covering it up with the cloak, you're going to not be able to see it anyway. So I put it together and then started painting it after it was built. The next colour we're going to use is Citadel Rakarth Flesh. Now while I'm painting this bit here, there's a few little bits that I don't paint, which I should have done. So you've got the large kind of bone spurs on the back and various bones and horns and things on the miniature. You've also got those cloth wraps around his arm and around the top of the spear too. But I also paint the top piece of his cloak there's like a little v kind of shape of cloak on his back and also the loincloth with the rakar flesh too now i'm going to use some lead belcher and this is going to be for the various armor plates and bits of metal that he's got strapped to his body we are going to be using some gold on them too but lead belcher is the order of the day for the first part Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour. I'm going to be using this to paint up that little Stormcast helm at the back there. You've also got the circle around the armour stomach plate. I think there's a few other little tiny bits too. A little coin type thing or a little disc that I painted gold at the bottom of his chainmail on his right leg there. Now we're going to use Mournfang Brown from Citadel. I'm just going to paint his trousers with this. Very quick layer this one. Now it's going to be a little bit of Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now I've got quite a bit of paint with this. He's got quite a few straps on his body that I use with the Mechanicus Standard Grey. You've also got all of the stone on his hammer and the largest part of the cloak at the back too. Now on this front part here, this front bit of cloak is kind of grey at the top with a hint of brown and that brown then fades into a kind of tiger print almost on like hanging down his right front. But we're just going to paint a bit of Mechanicus Standard Grey at the top of that for the time being, and then we can work on the rest of that once we've done a bit more. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Dawnstone, and this is to paint the little strappy bits at the top here, and the kind of cord that goes along holding those skulls and the Stormcast helm with. It's a slightly lighter coloured, I don't know, strip of leather or whatever it is. This is going off the what it looks like the colours are on the box and on the Games Workshop site there. Next up we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Warplock Bronze and this is going to be to do all the little detaily bits. It seems to have these little kind of metal teeth shapes stuck all over his armor like on the stomach and on his left forearm and you've got the little pieces of the hammer as well like the kind of straps that go around that big rock and also the bottom of his spear i 
I'm going to use a touch of Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to do a few little bits of leather strapping. With the little bits around the skull here. You've also got some on the skull, two skulls rather, on the little strip at the back there, hanging down either side of the Stormcast skull. Plus any other little straps that you might want to do with this kind of colour and then going over it with a bit of contrast. Now we're going for a little bit of Citadel XV88. We're going to use this to do the handle of the hammer and also the shaft of the spear. Time for a tiny little bit of Citadel Araman Blue. It's just going to be to do the little gemstone on the top of the sword that's strapped to his front. And also do the shape of the liquid in this vial, which is just behind him there. Finally, we reach the part that looks good, and it's adding the shade. So we're going to start with Citadel Nuln Oil. We're going to use this on all of the lead belcher the Dawnstone, the Mechanica Standard Grey, just go with all of those a nice wash with that. Now we're going to use some Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade we're going to use this on the gold on the stomach armor there. Also the little gold coin at the bottom and all of his skin and those little bits of gold down the back of his cloak. We're not going to use it on the Stormcast helm because I always do that with the Grax Earth shade on the Stormcast and just to give those gold sections a different look. Now we're going for some Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We can use this on all of the Rakarth flesh areas, with the exception of the loincloth, which, sorry, we should have used Reichland flesh shade on. We also used a little bit of Reichland flesh shade on the top, sort of shoulder parts of that Rakarth flesh bit on his shoulders. So just get all of the wraps and the skulls and things like that with the Seraphim Sepia and all his bone sections. And we can move on to the next contrast or shade. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Apothecary White Contrast. I'm using this on the bottom part of the cloak. Now it doesn't really look like it does too much here, but what it will do is it'll give it that little bit of shade when I start highlighting and building the colours back up just enough so that you still see that grey, but you get a nice bit of colour on there too. Now we're going on to a Grax Earth Shade. I'm going to use this on the Stormcast Helm and also the Mournfang Brown Trousers and the Shaft of the Spear as well and all of those Warplock Bronze areas. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast and this is going to be to do the little strips of leather which are kind of a tan colour which are holding these skulls and also the skulls at the back and a bit of strapping on one of those kind of bone spurs that he's got nailed to his back there.
We're now using a tiny bit of Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade. This is going to be to just do the Araman blue section, so very quick one here. We're going to return to Citadel Draxair Shade now, and all we're going to do is do a little bit of weathering and kind of dirt build up on the armour plates before you start doing the scuffs and the scratches. So you don't want to absolutely coat it with it, but you do want to discolour it enough so that you can see the brown of the Agrax Earth shade while leaving it silver enough around the edges. So it's mainly just on the flat areas that are going to show that kind of brownness, and then you're going to be building up the lead belcher and a bit of a highlight on the edges of the other parts. First up, we're going to use Bugman's Glow and start returning the colour to him. So, using a really small brush here, I think it's a small Citadel layer brush, we're going to reapply the Bugman's Glow, leaving the shade in the recesses, and just get some of that colour back on him. So, if there's areas that are going to be well shaded or not really visible, sort of like underneath the helm and the head there, all you want to do for that is just leave the shade on there, and then use the Bugman's Glow to build up the colour around those areas so that they stand out and it looks like there's a bit of natural shade in those recesses. We're now going to go to Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone and this is going to be mixed with the Bugman's Glow to give that a nice lighter shade and we're then going to use this as a highlight colour. So you want to be working this onto the areas where you've done the Bugman's Glow that are going to be catching the most light. So where you've got those muscles and things like that that are bulging out quite a bit you want to make sure that you're highlighting them so that it looks as though the light is catching them from above. On the chest there, when you look at pictures of a, a pectoral muscle, and you have kind of the ridges in certain areas that look thicker than the rest. That's what I'm going for here, where you have the sort of like the different lines with sort of like little bits of shade going across the muscle too. Now I'm going to add a little bit more Cadian Flesh Tone to lighten that up once more and do a second highlight, this time picking out the areas that would just be almost like an extreme highlight around the tops of the cheeks and like the maybe the little tip of the eyelid and then on the muscles doing the bits that are only going to be catching that extra little bit of light. And finally we're just going to highlight the skin with just pure Cadian flesh tone and this is to get the final little highlights just to give that a little lighter shade to make it stand out that little tiny bit more. Now we're going to use the Vallejo Black just to go over all of the black sections on the miniature. Make sure they've got a nice smooth coat before we start building up layers on them and highlights. Now you're looking at his hand now and you probably think as the video goes on, why is he just painting up the cloth and the hand and stuff like that when you're going to be making it red at the end anyway. But I'll come to that. But I prefer to paint it that way and then if he's dunked his hand in blood or whatever he's doing, and he's got a nice red hand there, you're still going to be able to see highlights on that skin underneath and things like that. So I just went for painting up the whole thing and then when you add the red to it later on you'll still get those highlights, you will need to highlight the red. So now I'm going to use some Vallejo German Grey and this is going to be just to highlight all of those black areas. So leaving the black in the recesses and for the most part if it's like the underside or under an edge, leaving that black too, you just want to be picking out the areas that will be catching the light with the German Grey. Now going on to Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey, we're going to be working on all of those black areas for the final highlights, such as his boots and his moustache and beard, and also the areas that we did with Mechanicus Standard Grey earlier on, sort of those straps on the chest there, and the large area of cloak and various little straps here and there, and start reapplying the colour to that, and you're applying it in the areas where it will be catching the most light. 
And what I've tried to do with this video, because there is so many colours, is try and keep it in a logical order. So you're going from black all the way through to the light greys on all of those areas too. Next up, we're going to use some Citadel Dawnstone, and this is going to be to highlight all the grey areas. So you've got the body of that hammer there, the hammerhead. You've got the straps on the front, the large area of the cloak, and some little straps and bits and bobs here and there too. So you just want to start highlighting these, maybe doing about 50% of the area that you did with the Mechanicus Standard Grey on these grey areas, and making sure you highlight all the crests and leaving the shade in the recesses and then some of that Mechanicus Standard Grey between the Dawnstone and those recesses. Final highlight for the grey is going to be Citadel Administratum Grey. This is going to be basically just to do like an edge highlight on it. It's going to be really thin, highlights on the straps and around the edges of sort of the bolts that are going through the cloak and like the little tears and things like that just to make those details really really stand out We are now going to be working on the shaft of the spear using Citadel XV88. When you're reapplying this, you can see there's loads of grain on the wood. It's a really, really cool spear. And so you're just going to be picking out those areas and any little bits that are like recessed, leave the shade in there. And then what you're doing when you're picking those out is it making the grain stand out as darker. You're making those little raised areas stand out as lighter. And then you don't really have to put too much time and effort into it to make it look really, really good. You're just going to do little highlights on the bits that you're painting up here and then that will make it stand out really, really nice. Next highlight for the spear is going to be Citadel Balor Brown, and this is going to be just, say, the top 50% of all these little bits that you've picked out and painted on these areas. So again, leaving the shade in the recesses, you're just going to be highlighting the bits that you got with the XV88. Doing about 50% of those areas where the light will be catching it. Finally, we're going to add a little bit of Ricard Flesh to the Ballor Brown. Do one final highlight, just doing the very tips and the, the highest raised areas on each of those little bits of wood that you've painted. And that will be the spear finished. Or at least the shaft of the spear finished. Now we are going to use the Rakarth Flesh to start reapplying that to the areas we used it on earlier. So you've got all those skulls, the big flapper skin, or whatever it is, the cloth or whatever. At the front there, he's got wearing as like a little tabard. You've also got the piece of the... So on that bit that's coming over the shoulder and down his front right there, it's going to be tiger coloured. You are going to paint off maybe the bottom quarter of that with the Rakarth Flesh. You're also going to use the Rakar Flesh on that top V-shape of the cloak as well, the like upper part of the cloak. And also, obviously, those two big sections sticking out of his back there. Now we're going to use some Citadel Pallid Witch Flesh, mix that with the Rakar Flesh, and add the first highlights to the tabardy bit at the front, and also the V-shaped part of the cloak on the back. So you're going to be using this much like you did with the Citadel Dawnstone, when you were doing the cloak at the back. Now we're going to use a little bit of pure pallid witch flesh just to do a tiny little highlight on the areas we've just used the previous mix on.
now going on to Citadel Ushabti Bone to work on these sections of bone on the miniature. And we're just going to highlight these, thinking about the light coming from above, so where the light's going to hit the top edges of things. So, so you've got the top of the eye socket, and then you've got the top of the underside of the eye socket. You're going to have a little bit on the teeth and the little ridges down the side of the skull too. But you're also going to be working on the larger sections of the bone, like those big spurs coming out from the back, and the two horns on the front of him too. The final highlight for the bone sections, we're going to use Citadel Screaming Skull. We're just going to use this to mainly do kind of edge highlights, but with like a slightly larger highlight in the areas where you've got big flatter surfaces just to make those highlights stand out. We're returning to the straps now that we did with the Ricard Flesh earlier. We're going to use Ricard Flesh with a little bit of Vallejo White mixed in just to do a single highlight on these straps here. So again, think about where the light's going to come from, which bits you're going to be highlighting, and just make those stand out a little bit. Onto his kecks now, we're going to use Citadel Mornfang Brown and return to those. You're going to be giving the base colour back, leaving the shade in the recesses and on the undersides of any lumps and bumps there too. So make sure you highlight all the top surfaces or recolour all the top surfaces with the Mornfang Brown. Think about the light coming from above and where the shade would be on those trousers. Going to mix a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown in with the Mornfang Brown and just do a highlight on all these top edges and top surfaces just to get a bit of a highlight going on there and make those stand out. And same again, we are going to use a little bit of Ballo Brown, mix that in to do a nice lighter highlight. And just use a little bit of that just to do a little bit of scuffing and a little bit of highlighting to those Mornfang Brown areas. Now we are going to use Citadel Retributor Armour and reapply this to the gold, leaving the shade in the recesses. So you can do this for the gold around the stomach plate there, also the Stormcast Helm, and any other little bits of gold on the miniature. I'm going to use some Citadel Auric Armor Gold. Auric? Auric? However you say it. We're just going to use this on the gold pieces on the back of the cloak and on that stomach armor there too. Also, you can do this on a coin if you want to. You can do the same colors as the Stormcast Helm or this armor. Final thing that I'm going to do is add a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Auric Armour Gold. And I'm going to do some nice little highlights on the gold to make those really, really stand out.
Return to the Storm, Cast Helm. We're going to go on to Citadel Liberator Gold. And start doing similar highlights that we did with the Auric Armor Gold on the Stormcast Helm there. And to give that a final highlight, we are going to add some Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Liberator Gold and just do some really fine edge highlights where it'd be catching the light to make those details stand out. Time to work on the tiger skin. Now we're going to be doing proper blending. No, we are not. We are going to use some Citadel Cassandori yellow and put a reasonable amount of that on there. So you've got a little bit more at the top, so it's a little bit orangey. Then we are going to use some Citadel Fugan orange. Get some of that above the yellow and then kind of mix them together a little bit. You'll be able to by making the orange pool a little bit, not too much because you don't want it to dry shiny, but by adding that a little bit and then maybe add another layer if you want it a little bit darker you can get that nice tiger orange going to the yellow you can also use this on the top part of the cloak there added a little bit we're now going to go for citadel araman blue and we're going to do some nice little highlights on the gemstone at the top here like reapplying the color leaving a little bit of the shade in the sec center of each of those sections or to one side of each of those sections we're also going to reapply this to the liquid in the vial here to make that stand out leaving a bit of shade at the bottom left of it and then we're going to be building up the colors to, towards the top right just to give them a nice little bit of shine now going to add a little bit of white to the araman blue and do the first highlights on this so you're going to be doing about maybe 50 percent of the araman blue with this layer so that you've got like that nice Araman blue around the outside of it and then the darker shaded areas around that and the same on the gemstone on the top of the sword there now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and then do a little bit more highlight to those areas like so I'm going to use a little tiny bit of Thondia Brown on the tiger skin part and just do the first layer of the little tiger stripes on there. Actually do a second one far too close there, but I actually go over and get rid of that. If you do make a cock up of it, you can just do the same again, add a bit of Rakarth flesh over it and then use the yellow and orange shades just to touch that up. We're going to put those on with Thondia Brown. And then with the next layer, we are going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black just to go over those, leave a little bit of the Thundia Brown around the outside of them. I'll give you those nice tiger stripes there. Now I'm going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Warp Lock Bronze. We are going to reapply this, leaving the shade in the recesses, making sure that you've got plenty of this on the raised areas and the lumps and bumps on the metal parts just to make those stand out and have a nice little bit of shine but you do want to leave plenty of the shade in the recesses just to give it that dulled look too as though it's quite weathered We're now going to use a little bit of citadel balthazar gold to highlight the warp lock bronze so as always doing about 50% of the previous layer just on the highlights on the areas that are going to catch the light that little bit more. Now on these layers you can if you want to at the end use some Citadel Nihilac Oxide just to add some kind of oxidation to those areas but I don't really want to do that to it. I think it looks quite nice with it just metal and shiny but without the blue because you've got those nice little points of blue on the bottle and the pommel of the sword as well so I don't put the Nihilac Oxide on there. Now I'm going to add some Model Air Chrome to the Balthazar Gold. And we are just going to do a quick highlight on the edges of all of those bronze parts. You can use this to do little scuffs on the bronze as well. And just to make give it those edge highlights. So it's a really nice way of doing little scuffs and scrapes and little lines 
as though it's been scratched and what have you. Now we're going to work on the grip of the pistol. We're going to use a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown, like you did with the shaft of the spear. You're going to be picking out the kind of grain on the handle and just painting that in line so you've got little bits of the shade in those little grooves. We are then going to use a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh, mix that with the Bane Blade Brown and just give that a little highlight on some of those parts to make the grain stand out on the wooden handle. Finally, we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the previous mix and just do one tiny little highlight on each of those little bits of grain. Now we're going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher. We are going to apply this to the areas we did earlier on, but you're going to leave plenty of the shades on there. You also don't want to be going over too much of the Grax Air shade or the Nuln Oil. Leave them to give it that grimy, weathered look around all the other details on there. But you want to pick out the edges and the scuffs and things like that to the metal just to give it that worn and well battered look. So all the edges of the shoulder plates and things like that just give that a little bit of a scuffing up. Now I'm going to go for Vallejo Model Air Chrome and we're just going to do some edge highlights using this on all of those lead belcher sections where you've got the little nicks in it and things like that you make sure that you've done a little thin line highlight on the bottom edge of each of those nicks to make that stand out to make it look like the light is catching the bottom edges there Gonna work on his eyes now using a little bit of Vallejo white. So we're just gonna drag the brush away from the nose and gently put that white onto each of the eyeballs. You then want to use a little tiny bit of black just to do a spot in each eye, which I seem to have missed off this video. So just do a little spot of black in each eye once you've done that, and then he will be able to see quite well. So to do that red hand, I'm just gonna use Citadel Caribbean Crimson and give this a good coat of that. What will happen is, because it's got quite a bit of pigment in there and it's that deep red colour, when it dries you'll have that nice deep red colour in all the recesses, but it's thin enough that you will be able to see the highlights underneath, so it'll make it look like he's kind of you know, washed his hand in the blood. It's not caked on and as bright red as maybe in the pictures that you see. If it was going to be wet blood, I would have used blood for the blood god and had some of it dripping down the spear, but as it is, I just wanted to leave it as on the hand. So it's a bit more like the Games Workshop version. We're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to use this to do the skin, which is on the scabbard of his sword. Use the Drakenhof Nightshade on that earlier on. So we're just going to use a tiny little bit of this to add some colour back to it. And the final colour we're going to use is Vallejo Black, and we're just going to use this to do the stitching down the side of that scabbard. So this is the finished miniature. Really pleased with how it turned out. It is a, such a good miniature to paint as well. There's loads of cool details, loads of fun to be had with it. You can practice a load of different techniques on the one model. But that's it, another one ready for the tabletop. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.